Good morning. Welcome to worship. Today is July 12th. Actually, today is July 2nd, <laughs> but we're pre-recording so that I can enjoy my week off. So when you watch this, um, I will be back from my week off. So I just want to give a big thank you to those who helped out um, while I was gone. Um, my brother, Andrea, those of you that stepped in for me, thank you very much. Um, I want to reiterate again our announcements. Um, we have decided as a board to do online worship only at 9 a.m. except for first Sundays when we will have a parking lot worship and celebrate Holy Communion together, much like last week. So the next time we will see each other in person is the first Sunday of August when we will gather in the parking lot at 9 a.m. and celebrate communion together. We're starting a new sermon series today and it's called Broken Good News for Tough Times. And I don't know if you can see it really well. I'll get a close up and put that in there in a minute. But I have some broken pottery right here um, as an image for you. And today we're talking about broken spirits and broken bodies. You have received your bulletin in an email and there are a couple of gathering words right there Will you join me in these opening words? Welcome to this house of the Lord. Thank you. We are you glad to be, be here, here this morning. morning. This is a time to offer our praise to God. With, With joy, joy, we, we thank, thank God for, for all the blessings, blessings that have been, been poured on, on us. Our first song this morning to get us up and going is This Is The Day, number 657 in our hymnal. This morning is Great is the Lord 2022, The Faith We Sing. Thank you. 
comes time now for us to pray. So in your bulletin, you have the name of those that we are lifting up. And so this morning we are lifting up our world and those affected by this pandemic, those who are unemployed and employed, those who are struggling and not struggling, those of God who are simply wondering when it's all going to end. We also lift up to you, O oh Lord, Catherine Gregg, who has um, started her journey into hospice. Please continue to pl pray for that family. We lift up Dwayne and Marilyn Gibson, who's the brother of Muriel Zimmerman, Mike Thomas, Christina Dawkins, Carlene Greaves, Gianna Heidbrink, Carol Pauling, Nathan West, Pat Backus, Shane Hill, Ruth Nelson, Betty Davis, and God, we lift up all of the caregivers and those who take care of those that we love. Will you pray with me? God, who plants seeds of hope and justice within our lives, we are so grateful for this community of faith and for all anywhere who hunger and thirst for your healing reconciling word. You know all of the things that are on our hearts today, and you bring us together in love and support. We ask your healing mercies with those who struggle with illness of every kind, with those feeling lost and marginalized, for those who mourn and for whom the darkness of sorrow enshrouds them. We ask your growth producing love for all those who celebrate and rejoice this day. Be with each one of us and all those whom we have named in our hearts before you. Help us to reach out to each other in compassion and support. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It comes on time now for a time of offering and giving. You can always give online at our website, um, smithvilleumc.com, and on the homepage there's a link to take you to our giving page. You can also pay by check in the mail or by automatic withdrawal, and we can get you one of those forms. I am very grateful for the ways in which you have continued to give throughout this whole uh, event. Um, and there are other ways to give too. There are ways to give of your talents and ways to give of your energy. So if you are looking for something to do to give back, um, let me know. We can get creative with um, how, what you offer and how you offer your gifts to the Lord. So let us give a prayer of thanksgiving. As we offer our gifts and lives in this moment, may we become imitators of you, gracious God, who holds nothing back from us, but is generous and gracious with all that is yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, the next song is I Love You, Lord, number 2068. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. Oh 
we're talking today um, about broken spirits and broken bodies. Um, the scripture today comes from the book of Romans. Actually, our whole series will be from the book of Romans. So it's following the lectionary um, for the summer. Uh, book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And I, there we go. So, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So I want to reread and I want you to pull out your highlighters, your pens or your pencils or your bookmarks, whatever it is that you use in your Bible or write it on a note for your mirror. I want you to take note of the first two verses of this scripture. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. You are not condemned. You are free in the spirit of God. We need to remind ourselves that as often as we can. This is Paul, and Paul likes to mingle his words back and forth, inside and out, and repeat himself a lot. Sometimes it can be hard to understand the point that Paul is getting to. Um, but one of the other scriptures that makes the point that Paul is making, he makes a little bit later in his letter to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, says, For our sake he made him, Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So, from violence and disaster and pandemics and all of this stuff, terrible things on the nightly news, to our personal, physical, relational, mental pain of our own lives. It's plain to see that we live in a broken world. It's easy to feel broken in this world. It's easy to be a lot like these pieces of pottery or this piece of a mug. We begin this series today with the internal brokenness of our own spirits, pain that can be both the cause and the effect of human sin. I know we don't like to talk about sin a whole lot, but it's kind of a little important to talk about every once in a while. But Paul's arguments, if we go back to Romans chapter 7, Paul's arguments about sin in Romans 7 and 8 can be a little difficult to follow. Sin is hard. 
basically what he says is the thing I know is wrong to do is the very thing I want to do. Just knowing it is wrong because the law tells me it is wrong makes me want to do it. Anybody felt that way? You know, like when you're a teenager and your dad says, don't come back after 11 o'clock, but then every time you push that a little bit further, well, it, 11.05 is fine, right? You know it wasn't right. So who can deliver us from this body of sin and death? That's what Paul asks in Romans chapter 7, verses 19. Who can save us? How can we become whole from being broken? Only Jesus is the answer to that question. Focusing on Jesus, making Jesus the center of our lives. God, Paul argues, sent the Son into the world to be sinful, as we are, to take on the sin, or to take the sin out of the world. So in love for us and with the power to heal, God incarnates the purpose of the law in the body of Jesus and wipes out condemnation, delivering God's people in the way that the law could not. You see, people before Jesus were caught up in the Mosaic laws, those laws that you read in Leviticus and Chronicles. I'm not sure there's a whole lot in Chronicles. Deuteronomy, Leviticus, there's a lot of thou shall not. So if people were trying to live straight by the law, and then there were the re religious right who would go around and say, you did not follow this law to the T. You are condemned. You cannot be in this house of worship. And I think at the beginning when God created these laws, when God, when, you know, when in the wilderness, when all of this pe the people of God started, that it may have been a good way to start. The rules are a good way to start. But then over time, I think we lost our way. We lost the, we misunderstood the meaning behind the laws. And so God sends a piece of himself. Not just God coming down from heaven and saying this. He sends a piece of himself that looks like us, smells like us, walks like us, talks like us, feels like us. And when he was here, he took on all of our pain and all of our brokenness and all of our sin. He took that to the cross and he died for us so that we may not be caught up in the law anymore, but may be set free to love others with that same extravagant love that he loved us. Now, the way Paul puts it, he makes it sound so easy as if our relationship with Christ makes choosing what is right, living according to the Spirit, automatic. But, like so many things, particularly when it comes to humans, it's much more easily said than done. There is always and will always be a tension between the Spirit and the flesh. Always. There will always be that devil and angel on your shoulder saying, this is what you should do. Oh, but this is going to feel so good. There's always going to be that because we live in a broken world. So there remains a tension between the spirit and the flesh. So the spirit being the ways of God and the flesh being the ways of the world. Now I want to clear something up. It is a common misunderstanding in this scripture that Paul is referring to our souls and our bodies. Our text uses several times the word flesh, making what seems to be almost nonsensical statements such as, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, verse 8. If that is the reality, why even try to live in God-pleasing ways? The key is what Paul means by flesh. To understand his usage, we turn to its twin, the body. Okay, so in Greek, the flesh is sarx, and in Greek, the body is soma. So together, the soma and the sarx are the flesh and the body. For Paul, the body is neither good nor bad in and of itself. The issue is how the body is used. 
When the body is used as God intended, the body is good. But when the body is used inappropriately and opposed to God's intention, it is a sinful body. So Paul's shorthand expression for a body that is misused is the term flesh. And so to live inappropriately is called living according to the flesh. Now, a lot of times people will read this and say, living according to the flesh is um, immediate satisfaction of your fleshly desires, whether that's alcohol or drugs or sex or whatever it is. But that's not necessarily what Paul is getting at here. He's trying to use common words for the time that don't really translate that well today. What it really is, is that we know that the body and soul are inextricably connected as our bodies are deeply impacted by the state of our spirit. Okay, if my spirit is sour, then what comes out of my heart is sour towards others. And even when I'm in a bad mood, my, I don't feel good. Like I hurt or I ache or I just am in a bad spirit and I don't wanna do anything. And I get a little snarky towards my teenager, especially since we've been around together so much. Broken hearts can lead to broken bodies, okay? When we don't take care of our spirits, it can break our bodies. Ulcers, cancer, sleeplessness, our body is impacted by our spiritual condition. Scientists say that our emotions, our soul, our spirit, is connected to our body. And when we are experiencing emotions that we can't put words to, our body tells us something is wrong through something, through some condition. And so, and not only our bodies, but the body of our human family. Greed, malice, hatred, fear due to our differences, all of the ways that our souls are broken by sin are literally killing us. They're making us sicker. When we don't focus on our soul, when we are not humble before God and before one another, then we cannot love like Jesus loves. And that goes so very deep. And I know we want to stay on the surface level. We want to leave church feeling good. But when we don't address the internal things, our bodies can't feel good. One of the big internal things, and some of you might not like what I'm about to say, you can call me about it. We can have a conversation. One of the things that the current events of this world has shown us is that racism is a sin and that us white people need to internally inspect our souls and see if we and figure out if we are continually being compliant with the racism in this world. Now you can proclaim up and down all day long that you're not a racist because you don't say hateful things to other people, to people of color. But racism is so much bigger than that. It's not just hateful words to another person. It's a system. It's a system that oppresses the other person that is not white. And like I said, we can have a conversation about that together. But a personal story. Uh, race in America is something that has been on my heart ever since I had a baby that's mixed, that has brown skin. And it has been a learning um, journey for me because I had no clue what it was like for a person of color to live in the United States. No idea whatsoever and I'm learning as I go but I had to come to myself humble myself before God and say oh my goodness some of those things that I thought were actually racist and I had to ask God to forgive me and I had to keep that at the forefront of my mind so I didn't continue those thoughts or those actions so I addressed that illness in my soul and it's something I have to address and we have to address and keep on the forefront of our minds all the time. 
kind of went down a little rabbit hole there. But let's turn this around a little bit. So let's give some hope, some good news. The Apostle Paul turns in this scripture to the power of grace. So there are two sides that are not equal. Grace is much stronger than sin. Christ's nature is much, much stronger than human nature. The good in us is much stronger than the bad. And that is why we can change and make positive changes in those unhealthy parts of ourselves. Knowing that goodness is stronger than badness in each of us, and knowing that the floodgates of the Holy Spirit are open and flowing with power, we realize we can make significant changes in our deficits of ourselves. Knowing that I was sinning because of the way that I felt and thought about other people around me, other people in this country, I knew was a sin I had to address. But then I also know that the Spirit of God is in me, there is no condemnation, and that I can use my spirit and my soul and my body and my voice for goodness. Here's the thing, however, the power of the evil one is not slow, is not dumb. The power of the evil one always attacks human beings where we are most vulnerable. That tricky, that's just how it works. The evil one attacks when we feel the most broken. So where are you most vulnerable? Where are we as human beings the weakest? It's when we're broken. It's when we feel like we have screwed up too much. It's when we feel like we are in the darkness and there is no light coming. That's when the enemy is going to say, you're not good enough. God doesn't want to use you. You're never going to get out of this. But what we see in scripture is a complete reversal. We are not condemned because the power and the spirit of Christ resides in us. God can make us whole. God can take what we think is broken and make it into something beautiful. Sometimes we don't realize how broken we are. Sometimes we don't realize how God is going to use that brokenness for his goodness and for his glory. When we live life in the spirit, it liberates us from hatred. It liberates us from sin. It liberates us from holding grudges. It frees us to love more. It takes away all the hindrances so that we can love more, so that God can use our brokenness for good. Focusing our minds on the things of the Spirit, compassion, kindness, fairness, unity, can heal our broken spirits and empower us to heal and help our broken world. Uh, there's one more scripture I'm going to point out, and then I'm going to close. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. So we're backing up, and as I'm turning there, if you don't know this little tidbit, the author of the book of Luke is also the same author as the book of Acts. So if there's another crossword or trivia in the newsletter, you now know that answer. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. I want to be recognized as a companion of Jesus. But the point is, is that they were normal fishermen. Before Jesus came along, they caught fish, stinky, smelly fish. And when Jesus came along, he took their lives and they became not just fishers of men, but they became casters of love, of peace, of kindness, of goodness. And later on down the road, when they were spreading that love after Jesus had died and resurrected, other people saw them and said, they were with Jesus. We can tell how they live, that Jesus has done something in their lives. I'm going to trust that person. I'm going to believe what that person says. If God can move in that person's life and make them loving and kind like that, 
then God can take me and make me loving and kind like that too. See, there is always this divine reversal in scripture. There's always this spirit and flesh. Paul, we have the author of Romans. You have to remember who Paul is when we're right when we're reading his work. Paul was the worst persecutor of Christians. He killed people who followed Jesus. He killed more Christians than any other. But then, in an encounter with the Holy Spirit, Paul becomes the man who travels the known world and spreads his love to everyone. God takes our brokenness and transforms it into his glory, and he can take our brokenness and transform it into his glory. We need to focus on our souls. We need to focus on being loving and kind and compassionate. And we need to have the hope and remember that sometimes, just like Paul, God can use the most hated thing about myself and use it for his good. I'm not sure what Paul's inner thoughts were. I am positive at one point in time he probably thought to himself, how on earth can God use me? I've killed his people. But God used him in a mighty and powerful way because there is now there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death we are free we are not condemned we have the spirit of Christ in us and God can take that and make something beautiful with it so be encouraged. Be encouraged and look inward this week. Write down those things that are broken about yourself. Write them down, journal it as we go through this sermon series and just see where God takes us in the next few weeks. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is my life is in you and that's in the faith we sing uh, 2032 closing prayer. Dear God, I thank you so much for this day. God, I even thank you for our brokenness because I have seen how you can take brokenness and make something beautiful. God, I pray that you give us the boldness and the strength to look inward. Give us the courage 
to be humble before you. Give us the motivation to live in your spirit and remind us, O oh God, that we are not condemned, that your love and your spirit rests inside of us and that has set us free. We pray, O oh God, for your grace and your mercy. May you guide and protect us until we meet again. And let us close with the Lord's Prayer, the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you go from here, remember this. The same Spirit of God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead also lives in you breathing new life and freedom into your hearts and minds. So go from here with joy and confidence, knowing that God is at work in you. God be with you until we meet again. Be with